How's it going everybody? It's Ryan here. I'm going to talk about the shoulder and shoulder pain, shoulder injury, uh, shoulder impingement, and common issues that occur for those that weight lift. Uh, in my previous video I talked about low back. I made two videos and I'll probably make two videos on the shoulder and throughout the course of my channel I'll be making videos on and off about this stuff. But uh, some of you have asked what application I use. I use Muscle Premium uh, by Visible Body and there will be a link in the description in case you're interested in purchasing it or just want to know what it is. Also, uh, keep in mind that when I do this talk about the shoulder and shoulder impingement and shoulder pain, that it's in, in somewhat very non-scientific terms and not really meant to be like a, from a, for a therapist. It's really more just for the average person, but just a little bit more in depth for the average person and not someone that's a coach. And if you are a coach, of course, you'll learn a lot if you're a personal trainer or something like that, or even in physical therapy school, or even a therapist or chiropractor or something like that. But keep in mind that a lot of my viewpoints are just from experience, and then a lot of stuff I've watched on Kelly Starrett's channel, and also just a lot of stuff I've read. I've read tons of stuff on shoulder pain, and it's just the cumulative information. So let's take a look at the shoulder here. So the front delt, the medial delt, and the rear delt. Typically, these don't typically give us problems. Stuff refer into there. Uh, you can see these little um, yellow things. These are nerve nerve branches. Okay, so let's move this out and let's take a look at the rotator cuff. Now, I want you to notice something when you look into the, the shoulder here for a second. The, the thing that's really important to note when it comes to shoulder impingement, and just to clarify what it is, under most circumstances, shoulder impingement, and also as sort of a close second that's very common, is bicep tendonitis. Uh, is the, the stuff that occur that that ducks underneath the acromion process right here this tip here of the scapula that I'm pointing at uh, you can see underneath there's the supraspinatus that is the muscle that typically gets impinged quite a bit and based on this anatomy chart this is in good posture you can see how much little space there is turning around now one thing to understand too about this entire socket, let's go ahead and make the humerus disappear for a second. You can see the, the glenoid fossa, which is the, basically the, the groove or the, the section where the, the shoulder or the ar arm goes into, goes into this section here, or this, this depression or whatever you want to call it, this socket. Actually, how to make it come back now? Oh, that's right, I gotta click here. There you go. Okay, so there it is, it's back. So, well, my point of making it disappear and then making it reappear is for you to kind of understand what's going on because a lot of the time, the shoulder, the scapula here, clavicle, all this stuff that connects these muscles here, the pectoralis major and the pec minor, get short and they cause the shoulder to cave in. Uh, typically the chest will sink in and then the upper back will round. All this stuff here will round. All this, a lot of this stuff will typically get stretched, especially the inf these rotator cuff muscles here, the infraspinatus and teres minor. Just imagine sitting at a desk with bad posture, right? That's what that does. It, it makes So when that happens, look at the humerus, like I, I made it disappear earlier. I wanted to show you that because what that does, it moves the, the shoulder or the, the humerus, the upper arm, in front, for more forward in the socket. So when this whole region here, you know, see these muscles that connect to the upper arm, all this stuff that I'm clicking on, there's the long head of the bicep, then there's the coracohumeral ligament, the supraspinatus, it gets, it shrinks the space underneath the acromion process. And I'm just trying to give you an idea of kind of visually what to look at, because that's really, really important, because that's how I see things. It's just visually like how the body moves when I watch someone train, and when someone has pain, because a lot of the time what's interesting too is that when someone has horrific posture, they don't have any shoulder pain sometimes. And that's that just goes to show that the human body is very good at cleaning up or dealing with problems. Uh, but understand that when that space gets closed, that's usually the biggest problem with impingement with bad posture. Now, even if you have great posture, a lot of the time, the pec minor here, which let me move the pec major and make it disappear, and you kind of see the pec minor there. And you can see how it connects here to the scapula. So I'll turn around here. Let's go remove the trap here, trapezius. There's a scapula there, and you can kind of see where the pec minor attaches to the scapula, the, the coracoid process, I think this is what this is called. Um, 
And what that does, it moves this entire section, this region, the scapula, and moves it forward. It moves all these ligaments and tendons and makes it forward, makes the arm go forward, and shrinks the space underneath here in the supraspinatus. And when that happens, it has a likelihood of things running into one another. That might not be necessarily an accurate description, but it's a very simplistic way of explaining what happens, because there are other things in here that I'm not even sure of that I can remember that are sort of, you know, this is a very simplified model of a, of an anatomy chart, I think, because there's more going on in there, because I don't think it has a bursa sac in here. So what's this? This is the capsular ligament, so that's not even in there. So my point of, okay, so that's what that's that. So when this arm goes forward, so this is the reason why when you work on external rotation in your shoulder and improving to minimize shoulder impingement and to cure or minimize any shoulder pain you have, this muscles here, the infraspinatus and the teres minor, help pull the humerus back. And you just kind of have to use your imagination because this model doesn't move uh, because what it will do is it'll pull this upper arm into the socket more more deep into the socket which allows for better better positioning of the shoulder and getting more leverage and makes it so that it doesn't sit and pinch underneath here so the next thing I'm going to talk about is bicep tendonitis and it's it's like, I'm not going to really diagnose or really say what you might have or what to consider excuse me <clears throat> But the one thing I want you to think about here is that look at where everything is situated. Look, the the supraspinatus, which is the one that typically the culprit for getting pinched by your um, what is it um, by the acromion process, bursa sacs stuff and whatnot. And then you got the uh, the bicep, long hand of the bicep, right? So look, they're in very similar positions. So if we can move this ligament here and make that disappear, we can get a better idea. So look where it connects. You know, it does, it, the bicep crosses the shoulder joint. You see that? And you can kind of see how all this here are all in relationship. They all move together. When you do a bicep curl, this is going to move a little bit, especially if you're moving weight, a lot of weight, when doing lots of reps. Uh, when you do an overhead press, this stuff will get in the way. So you can have impingement of the bicep tendon. You can have impingement of the um, infraspinatus, uh, I mean, supraspinatus. And how can you tell which is what? Well, I mean, there really is no... I mean, one of the ways you can tell is like if you rub up on here, uh, I'll go on this side here. If you rub up on here, typically the, I mean, one way to tell that you're having shoulder impingement in the bicep is you, typically the pain will radiate down the bicep. Now, this is, again, anecdotal. Uh, anecdotal. This is not like clinical trials or clinical explanation or whatnot. But, and when you have um, supraspinatus impingement, that's typically more, your bicep doesn't bother you. You know, it's more of a, it's the more common one, the probably the one that you might have, the highest percentage chance. And um, if I don't know if you can see me in the camera here, but if you were to cross your arm over your chest like this, and then you were to raise your arm up and down, and you have some discomfort or pain, uh, that that's a positive test for shoulder impingement. My left side, I don't have it on my right. <clears throat> on my right side, I do. Uh, I I feel a little bit. So I need some water. <laughs> So what's important is that, how do you fix that, right? So the main thing of this video is really just to explain all the stuff and just kind of get a visual representation of the common muscles and just getting a visual idea of where everything is and understanding that when the, when the shoulders sink in, like for example, when you do a lot of bench pressing, your chest muscles get tight, which can pull your shoulders forward. It shrinks the space under this, underneath the chromium process. It gives the increased likelihood of overuse of the, uh, the long head of the bicep. We're well, not overuse, but just... It's just in the way of traffic, if that makes any sense. And one of the things to kind of help create the solution is obviously to improve, the, to improve our problem is to simply pull our shoulders back, have a better posture. Now, there's more to it, of course. When you're in pain, it, it's kind of like you're in a point of no return, if that makes any sense. You got to really like, if you're in hurting, you've been doing something wrong for a long time. So if it hurts a lot, I mean... It's, it's interesting because there's just so much things out there like you can read about it, but then your particular situation is, is going to be difficult to find unless you have a lot of experience or you talk to someone with a lot of experience. So the one thing I'll say is that typically if you roll out your shoulder, especially the front delt, uh, a lot, what you're going you're gonna to get a lot of benefits to that because I find that it seems to, Kelly Starr it says like un unglue the muscles, and that's kind of a good way of explaining it because it really does make a difference. It almost eliminates. It makes the pain disappear. But 
Uh, anyways, I hope this video has been informative. Uh, please leave some comments below and some questions uh, about this because there is more to talk about. It's just I wanted to put a video up for Monday morning. So um, leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll probably dive into it. Uh, I need to go through the comments again. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.